Good day to each and everyone. So, my discussion for today is our uh, module 3 or uh, the so we call chapter 3. Crime, criminal, and criminal behavior. So, let's go now for our second slide. So, second slide, okay. Crime as an act or omission in violation of criminal law in its legal point. An antisocial act, an act that is injurious, detrimental, or harmful to the norms of society. They are the unacceptable acts in its social definition. Psychologically, crime is an act which is considered undesirable due to behavioral maladjustment of the behavior of the offender. Acts that are caused by maladaptive or abnormal behaviors. It is an act committed or omitted in violation of public laws forbidding or commanding it. It is also an act that violates the law of the nation. So ma'am, ano po yung crime? Crime, ito yung uh, ginagawa ng isang criminal. Okay? Crime also, sabi nga, it violates the law of the nation. Okay? Uh, Vinaviolate niya yung batas ng Pilipinas o ng ibang bansa. And also, crime, okay, the act is injurious, detrimental, or harmful. Lahat ng crime na ginagawa, okay, it is harmful, injurious, and detrimental. Yun po yung tinatawag nating crime. And also, crime okay uh, nangyayari yan because of the uh, because of abnormal behavior of the offender or of the criminal kaya nang nangyayari yung crime na tinatawag natin next we have offense is an act or omission that is punishable by special laws ma'am ano po yung offense offense yan yung mga tinatawag nating uh, uh, Republic Act Number Okay, lahat po ng RA, yan po yung mga special laws natin O yan yung tinatawag nating offense uh, Yun yung uh, uh, ibibigay sa kanilang uh, ibibigay sa kanila or uh, yun yung ipapataw sa kanila dahil ginawa nila yung offense na yun and it is punishable by special laws. Next, we have felony. Is an act or omission that is punishable by the revised penal code. It is an act or omission punishable by law. Ma'am, ano naman po yung felony? Felony, for example, is yung tinatawag nila na treason, codita. Yan po yung tinatawag nilang felony na ang nagbibigay uh, ng penalty sa kanila is the revised penal code. Magkaiba po ang offense and felony. Felony is committed not only by means of deceit. Okay? Or uh, panloloko. But also by means of fault, fault or kolpa kasalanan. Ayan po yung felony din. Okay? Hindi lang siya panloloko, pati na rin, uh, kasama na rin yung uh, kasalanan. So, yan ang ibig sabihin ng felony natin. And then, we have also delinquency, o yung tinatawag natin misdemeanor, acts that are in violation of simple rules and regulations usually referring to acts committed by minors. Ayan naman yung acts or violations or uh, yung hindi pagsunod ng minors sa simple uh, regulation, rules and regulations. Yan yung uh, kapag nakumit nila yon, tinatawag siyang delinquency or misdemeanor. Kapag ka minor ang nakagawa ng krimen. Delinquency or misdemeanor. So, we go now in criminological classification of crime. So, first, we have acquisitive or inst uh, instinctive crimes. Acquisitive crime is one 
which when committed, the offender acquires something as a consequence of his criminal act. Okay? Meron siyang nakukuha, kaya niya ginagawa, or kaya niya kinukumit yung crime na yon. Ano ba yung usually na nakukuha doon sa paggawa ng krimen? Pera. di ba? Gift. Kaya nila ginagawa or kinukumit yung krimen na yon. Yun ang tinatawag nating acquisitive. From the word itself, acqui, acquires. Okay? Next, the crime is instinctive when the result of criminal act is destruction naman. Okay? Extinctive destruction panggugulo pang uh, panggulo destruction okay yan ang pagkakaiba ng acquisitive to instinctive next we have the seasonal and situational crimes seasonal crimes are those that are only at a certain period of the year okay seasonal okay we have also season for example ha we have also season we have the rainy season Okay? Something like that. Then, ganito din po ang seasonal crimes. Nangyayari lang yan, okay, in a certain period of the year. Like kapag ka Christmas, di ba? Maraming nangyayaring krimenjoan. Seasonal po yan. Yun po ang ibig sabihin ng seasonal crimes. While uh, situational crimes are committed only with a given situation. Kunwari, for example, nangangailangan ka ng pera. Ang sitwasyon ganito, you need, you really, really uh, need a money. Ngayon, may nakita kang uh, isang uh, babae, okay, nakita mo mayaman siya, kasi dun sa suot niyang alahas, at ikaw naman nangangailangan ng pera. Because of that situation of yours, ninakawan mo yung babae. Okay, situational lang po. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng situational crimes. Only with a given situation conducive to its to its commission. Okay? Situation 'yon. Next, we have the so-called episodic and instant crimes. Episodic crimes are serial crimes. They are committed by means of series of acts within a lengthy space of time. Ibig sabihin, okay, uh, series yan. Okay? Like sa mga kung sino man ang nanonood ng mga Korean uh, drama dito, di ba? May episode 1, episode 2, episode 3. Ganon din po yun. Okay? Series, uh, series niya ginagawa. Uh, serial crimes ang tawag doon or uh, mayroon din silang tawag pa na iba. But, hindi ko siya hindi ko siya uh, Masabi, nakalimutan ko kung ano yung tawag doon sa uh, crime na yon. But, uh, sabi nga dito, episodic crimes, okay, they are committed by means of series of act within a lengthy space of time. Okay, for example, uh, November, gumawa siya ng krimen. Ang ginawa niyang krimen is uh, murder. Okay, then, Next year, November, okay, ang ginawa niya ulit na krimen, okay, is murder. Okay, ganun po ang episodic crimes, okay, within a lengthy space of time. Then also, we have the so-called instant crimes, are those that are committed the shortest possible time. Instant, mabilisan, okay, yun po ang tinatawag nating instant crimes, okay. Ang pinakamabilis na ginagawang crime or yung instant crime is pag nanakaw, pang hold up. Okay? Yan po yung tinatawag nating mga instant crime in a shortest possible time. Next, we have the so-called static and continuing crimes. Static crimes are crimes that are committed only in one place. Okay? Static ibig sabihin iisang lugar lang. Okay? Or doon lang sa lugar na yon ginawa yung krimen. But, in continuing crimes, okay, are crimes that are committed in several places. Kunwari, ang ginawa niyang krimen is rape. Ginawa niya sa Ordaneta yung rape. Then, 
Okay? Uh, habang bumabiyahe sila, napadaan, uh, pumunt, uh, napadaan sila sa binalonan, okay, doon niya pinatay yung uh, nirate niya. And then, biyahe ulit siya, pumunta siyang pusurubyo, doon niya itinapon yung bangkay. So, that is what we call continuing crimes that are committed in several places. Continuous. Okay? Next, we have the so-called rational and irrational crimes. Rational crimes are those committed with intent. Offender is in full possession of his mental faculties and capabilities. Yan po yung tinatawag nating rational crime. Okay? Alam niya yung ginagawa niya. Full possession siya sa pag-iisip niya o yun sa mental faculties at capabilities. Okay? Alam niya yung ginagawa niya. Alam niya na gagawin niya yung krimen na yun. At alam din niya kung ano yung magiging consequence nung gagawin niyang crime. While uh, irrational crimes are committed with intent, offender does not know the nature of his act. So, kabaliktaran. Ito naman, hindi po niya alam yung uh, mangyayari or consequence nung gagawin niyang act. Okay? Yun po ang tinatawag nating irrational crimes. Rational and irrational crimes. Next, we have the so-called white-collar and blue-collar crimes. White-collar crimes are those committed by a person of responsibility and of upper socioeconomic class in the course of their occupational activities. And blue-collar crimes are those committed by ordinary professionals to maintain their livelihood. So, in uh, white-collar crimes students or... Mm -hmm, Nakukumit siya or kinukumit siya ng isang uh, responsabling tao ng upper class. Okay? Or the upper world. Upper socioeconomic class. Yung mga mayayaman. Then, the white uh, or the blue, sorry, the blue collar crimes naman committed by ordinary professional. Pangkaraniwang tao. Because to, min, uh, to maintain their livelihood. Para Okay, may pangkain sila, may panggastos sila, kaya ginagawa nila yung uh, krimen na ginagawa nila. Okay? Yan po ang pagkakaiba ng white and blue collar crimes. White collar from the upper socioeconomic, then the blue collar naman, ordinary pro uh, professional or, okay, uh, uh, from the uh, lower class. Okay, yan po yung tinatawag nating white collar and blue collar crimes. Next, we have the so-called upper world and the underworld crimes. Upper world crimes are those committed by individuals belonging to the upper class of the society. Okay, ayan yung mga crimes na kinukumit ng, in, ng isang individual okay, na uh, napapasama sa upper class of society. Then, underworld crimes naman are committed by members. Okay? Members naman, okay, na naka, nakasali sa lower or underprivileged class of society. Sa mababa po, lower class or privileged class of society. Okay? So, madali lang i-distinguish ang upper and underworld crimes. Next, we have the so-called crimes by imitation and crimes by passion. Okay, so as I've said, uh, crimes by imitation and crimes by passion. Crimes by imitation are crimes committed by merely duplication of what was done by others. Okay, uh, inuulit mo. As I've said, inuulit mo yung ginagawa ng iba. Dinoduplicate mo. Okay, duplication. Yun ang tinatawag nating crimes by imitation. While crimes by passion are crimes committed because of the fit of great emotion. For example, okay, your husband or your wife, okay, uh, is, uh, you see, he or she is having uh, sex intercourse with his lover. 
So, because of your anger, okay, nakuha mo ngayon silang patayin. Okay? Because of that uh, passion or yung fit of great emotion mo. Dahil nga, syempre, sino ba naman ang hindi magagalit kapag ka nakita yung partner or yung asawa na nakikipag-sex sa iba? Okay? Yun po ang tinatawag nating crimes by passion. Next, we have the so-called uh, service crimes. Service crimes refer to crimes committed through rendition of a uh, service to satisfy desire of another naman. So, uh, you are committed or you are rendering service to satisfy desire of another. For example, uh, dahil nga hard killer ka, okay, ngayon, uh, si uh, si A, kinuha ka niya para patayin si B. Okay? To satisfy the desire of A, okay, kaya ka kinuha at para patayin mo si B. Once kasi na napatay mo si B, okay, her desire, okay, is satisfied. Okay? Service crimes. Okay? You are rendering service. Uh, nag, uh, kinuha ka niya para magtrabaho ka sa kanya. Yun po ang ibig sabihin ng service crimes. Next, we have the so-called criminal. Okay? Sa legal definition muna tayo. Criminal, any person who committed a crime and has been convicted by a court for the violation of a criminal law. So, criminal tao po yan. Tao na po ang pinag-uusapan natin. Person. Okay? Person who commit crime and who or will be convicted by the court because of the crime uh, he or she violate. Okay? And also, he is any person who has been found to have committed a wrongful act in the course of the standard judicial processes. Okay? Yan na po yung uh, tao na gumagawa ng krimen. Okay? She is, he or she is doing a wrongful act. Okay? Then, in criminological sense naman tayo, criminal, a person who violated a social norm or one who did an antisocial act. A person who violated the rules of conduct due to behavioral maladjustment. Dito naman sa criminological sense natin, ang uh, criminal daw or yung tao daw dahil nakakagawa ng krimen because of her or his behavioral maladjustment. And also, uh, they are violating rules and regulations because of their behavioral or behavior. Yan din po ang ibig sabihin ng or ibang definition ng criminal. Next, we have the so-called criminological classification of criminals. Okay, so first, we have based on etiology. We have acute criminal. Acute criminal is one who violates a criminal law because of the impulse of fit of passion. They commit passionate crimes. Like I've said kanina, napag-usapan na natin yung crimes by imitation and crimes by passion. Ito din po yun. Acute criminal ang tawag sa kanya kapag uh, he or she violates a criminal law because of the impulse, bugso, okay, of uh, passion. They commit passionate crimes. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. And next, we have chronic criminal is one who commits crime acted in consonance of deliberate thinking. He plans the crime ahead of time. They are the targeted offenders. Okay, in chronic uh, criminal, plinaplano niya. Okay, nagpaplano na siya ahead of time. Meron na siyang target. Pinagplaplanuhan na niya yun. Yung target niya na yun. And then, kapag dumating yung araw na yun, okay, that's will the time that he or she will uh, will uh, kill that person. Kasi ahead of time, sabi nga, napagplanuhan na niya. Okay, tinatawag po silang chronic criminal. Yung mga may plano na or may mga targeted offenders na or targeted person na. 
Next, based on behavioral system naman tayo. Number one, we have ordinary criminal. Is considered as the lowest form of criminal in a criminal career. He doesn't stick to crime as a profession, but rather push to commit crimes due to great opportunity. Okay, ordinary criminal yung mga nakikita uh, or napapanood lang natin sa TV. Okay, they are uh, committing crime because uh, opportunity and also uh, they need. Kasi kung hindi nila gagawin yun, magugutom sila. Okay, ordinary criminal ang tawag natin doon. And also, uh, they didn't stick to a crime as a profession. Hindi nila ginagawang profession okay, ang paggawa ng krimen. Next, we have the so-called organized criminal. Is one who associates himself with other criminals to earn a high degree of organization to enable them to commit crimes easily without being detected by authorities. They commit organized crime. Organized crime, yan na po yung tinatawag nating mafia. Okay, we have different mafias. We have uh, Yakuza in Japan, uh, cartel in Mexico, Mendelin cartel in Mexico. So, marami po tayong mga organized crime. Yan po yung tinatawag nating organized criminal. Okay? Sumasali sila sa isang organisasyon or sa organized crime para hindi sila madaling ma-detect ng mga okay? Uh, tinatawag nating police personnel or authorities. So yan po ang tinatawag nating organized criminal. Next, we have the so-called professional criminal is a person who is engaged in criminal activities with high degree of skill. He is usually uh, practices crime as a profession to maintain a livelihood. Okay? So, professional crime, okay? Yung paggawa nila ng crime, ginagawa po nilang profe uh, profession. Okay? Because they are, uh, they have high degree of skill. And also, they are practices this uh, profession to maintain their livelihood. So, yan naman po ang professional crime na tinatawag natin. Next, we go now on based on activities naman tayo. We have three. We have professional criminals, accidental criminals, and habitual criminals. So, professional criminals, kagaya ng sabi ko kanina, okay, are those who practice crime as a profession for a living. Criminal activity is constant in order to earn skill and develop ability in their commission. So, naipaliwanag ko na yan doon sa uh, last slide natin kanina. So, next, we have the accidental criminals. Are those who commit crimes when the situation is conducive to its commission. Okay? Nangyayari ang accidental criminals or nagiging accidental criminals sila. Okay? Dahil nga uh, accidente lang na napatay nila yung tao. Hindi nila uh, hindi nila sinasadya ang pagkakapatay nila doon sa tao na yun. Kaya tinatawag silang accident criminals. In a given situation lang din nangyayari yun. Okay, so next we have habitual criminals are those who continue to commit crime because of deficiency of intelligence and lack of self-control. Okay, so paulit-ulit po nilang ginagawa yung uh, crime, okay, or paulit-ulit nilang kinukumit yung crime because of deficiency of intelligence or lack of intelligence and lack of self-control. Hindi po nila makontrol yung sarili nila na huwag gawin yung krimen na yon or yung crime na yon Kaya, uh, paulit-ulit po nilang ginagawa. Habitual. Ang tawag naman doon. Next, we have the so-called based on mental attitudes. Number one, we have, we have active criminals are those who commit crimes due to aggressiveness. Nakakakumit sila ng crime because masyado silang agresibo. 
Okay? Yan yung tinatawag nating active criminal. While passive inadequate criminals are those who commit crimes because they are pushed to it by reward or promise. Ito namang mga criminal na to, o yung mga gumagawa ng krimen, ginagawa nila yung krimen because of uh, reward or promise. Kaya sila tinawag na passive inadequate criminal. Okay, may nagpo-push sa kanila para gawin nila yung crime na yon. And ano yung nagpo-push sa kanila? The reward or promise. Next, we have the socialized delinquents. Okay? Ano naman yung tinatawag nating socialized Okay, so socialized delinquent ta uh, delinquents tayo are criminals who are normal in behavior but defective in their socialization process of development. Okay? Normal po yung behavior nila. But once na na socialize sila, pumunta sila sa crowded uh, uh, place, okay? Doon na po sila natitrigger. Nakakagawa na sila ng krimen. Siguro dahil uh, takot silang makipagsalamuha sa ibang tao or sa maraming tao. Kaya tinawag silang socialized delinquents. Next, we have the so-called based on legal classification. Number one, we have the so-called habitual delinquent. is a person who within a period of 10 years from the date of his release or last conviction of the crimes of serious or less serious physical injuries, robbery, staffa, theft, or falsification, is found guilty of any of the said crimes or third time offender. Yan ang tinatawag natin. Okay, within a period of 10 years from the date na nakalabas siya or yung last conviction niya, is nakagawa na naman ulit siya ng mga crime like robbery, physical injuries, estafa, theft, classification, okay? Or a third time offender. Pangatlong pagkakataon na po uh, nangyari yung krimen na yun. Okay? Tinatawag po siyang habitual delinquent. Okay? Next, we have the so-called recidivist. Recidivist is one who at the time of his trial of one crime shall have been previously convicted by final judgment of another crime embraced in the same title of the revised penal code. Ito naman pong recidivist, okay? Uh, kasalukuyan nangyayari yung trial niya and then convicted pa pala siya ng isa pang crime, okay? Na uh, nasa iisang uh, or it embraces the same title okay, of the revised penal code. Okay, as I've said, okay, yung recidivist po, okay, nagkukumit pa rin sila ng crime even they have uh, the final judgment na or nakakakumit pa rin sila ng crime kahit meron na silang final judgment. And, okay, nasa isang title lang yung ginawa nilang krimen. In revised penal code kasi we have different title. Okay? Malalaman nyo yan kapag uh, napag-aralan napag -aralan nyo na yung uh, low 1, low 2. Okay? So, uh, we have different title in the revised penal code. Next, we have uh, number 3. We have the quasi-recitivist and the reiteration uh, na tinatawag. Okay? Yan yung mga legal classification natin. Next, we have uh, the study of criminal behavior. First, criminal psychology is a subfield of general psychology where criminal behavior is only in part by which phenomena psychologists choose to study. It may be defined as the study of criminal behavior, the study of criminal conduct, and activities in an attempt to discover concurrent patterns and to formulate rules about his behavior. So, in criminal psychology, okay, pinag-aaralan po yan ng ating mga psychologists. How the behavior of one person, okay, uh, ano yung mangyayari kapag ganito yung behavior niya, okay, so lahat po yan pinag-aaralan sa criminal psychology with the criminal psychologist. Okay? 
Then next, we have the so-called behavior. Refers to action or activity. It is the observable action. Ayan po yung nakikita sa atin, yung behavior po natin as a person. Kung, po, kung paano tayo makisalamuha sa ibang tao, tinatawag po yun na behavior. Okay? Mabait ka ba sa ibang tao? Masungit ka ba? Something like that. Behavior po yun. Okay? Yung nakikita can be seen and verified. Okay? Yun po ang tinatawag nating behavior. Next, classification of behavior. So, we have classification of behavior. Number one, normal behavior or yung tinatawag nating adaptive or adjusted behavior. The standard behavior, the totality accepted behavior because they follow the standard norms of society. Sa normal behavior natin, normal lang. Yung normal behavior natin, okay? Uh, accepted behavior because they follow. We are following rules or norms of the society. Okay, so, ang tawag doon normal behavior. Sinusunod natin yung rules and regulations ng society natin. Well, abnormal behavior or yung tinatawag nating maladaptive or maladjusted behavior, a group of behaviors that are deviant from social expectations because they go against the norms or standard behavior of society. Hindi nila sinusunod. Okay? Hindi sila sumusunod doon sa norms or standard ng society o doon sa tinatawag nating rules and regulations ng isang society. Kaya tinawag silang abnormal behavior. Okay? A group of behaviors that are deviant from social expectation. Next, so uh, uh, kapag katawas ng classification, we have kinds of behavior. We have overt behavior, covert behavior, conscious behavior, unconscious, rational, irrational, voluntary, and involuntary behavior. So first, we have uh, we will go to overt behaviors muna. Overt behaviors, behaviors that are outwardly manifested or those that are directly observable. Yung nakikita po sa atin. Okay, yun po ang tinatawag na overt behaviors. From the word itself, overt, nakikita, observable. Okay? Next, covert naman are behaviors that are hidden. That are hidden. Okay? Yung, uh, syempre, hidden ibig sabihin nakatago o tinatago. Parang yung sinasabi nilang, oh, may tinatago pa lang ganitong kakulit or may tinatago ka pa lang ganitong behavior. Something like that. Next, we have the unconscious behavior. When acts are embedded in one subconscious and aware. Ibig, sabi, ibig sabihin, hindi niya alam yung ginagawa niya. Or hindi niya alam yung nagiging behavior niya sa isang tao. Yun po yung tinatawag nating unconscious behavior. While conscious behavior naman, when acts are within the level of awareness aware siya doon sa ipinapakita niyang behavior niya. Okay, yun po yung tinatawag nating conscious and unconscious behavior. Now, let's go to rational and irrational behavior naman. Rational behavior, when a person acted with sanity or reason. Okay, nasa, nasa tamang pag-iisip po siya. Okay, rational behavior doon. Pero kapag irrational naman, when the person acted with no apparent reason or explanation, bakit niya ginawa yon Or uh, hindi niya alam yung rason kung bakit niya ginawa yung ginawa niya. Okay, yun ang tinatawag na irrational. No apparent reason. Wala siyang rason kung bakit niya ginawa yung ginawa niya. And also, there is no explanation. Hindi rin niya ma-explain kung bakit niya po yun ginawa. Next, we have voluntary and involuntary behavior. Paano naman yung voluntary natin? Is an act done with full volition or volition of will such as when we discriminate, decide, or choose. In involuntary naman, refers to the bodily processes that uh, force when we are awake or asleep like respiration, circulation. So, involuntary, full volition po tayo, alam din po natin. Okay, we are deciding or we decide or choose. 
Well, in involuntary behavior naman, ayan naman, for example, if uh, we are awake or sleep, like respiration, circulation, and many other more. Voluntary behavior and involuntary behavior. Next, we go now to aspects of behavior. So, marami din tayong uh, aspects of behavior. So, number one. Okay, so first, we have intellectual aspect. This aspect of behavior pertains to our way of thinking, reasoning, solving problem, processing info, and coping with the environment. Yun ang tinatawag po nating intellectual aspect. Okay, kung paano tayo mag-isip, kung paano tayo mag on how we solve problem, processing information, ganun po ang intellectual aspect. Emotional aspect naman, this pertains to our feelings. Yung nararamdaman natin. Moods. Okay? Temper. And strong motivational force. Yan naman po yung tinatawag nating emotional aspect. Within our emotion. Next, we have social aspect. This pertains to how we interact. Paano tayo makisalamuha sa ibang tao. Okay? Social aspect ang tawag doon. Next, we have the so-called moral aspect. This refers to our conscience and concept on what is good or bad. So, moral, uh, tinitignan natin kung yung ginagawa ba natin is tama or mali. Because tayo na tao, okay, or tayo as a human, we know what is right from wrong. Okay, yun po ang tinatawag nating moral aspect. Psychosocial as, uh, psychosexual aspect, sorry, this pertains to our being a man or a woman and the expression of love. Okay? Kung uh, dito na po uh, nakikita yung uh, babae at laki kung paano sila mag-express ng pagmamahal sa uh, family nila, sa loved ones nila, or doon sa taong special sa kanila. Okay? Psychosexual. Uh, male to female. Okay? Political aspect naman, this pertains to our ideology towards society or government. So, political aspect from the word itself, political, okay, society and government. Next, we have value or attitude. This pertains to our interest towards something, yung likes and dis dislikes natin. Ano ba yung mga gusto natin at ayaw natin? Okay? Saan ba tayo interesado? Saan ba nakukuha yung atensyon natin? Or sino ba yung mga nakakakuha ng atensyon natin? Something like that. The value and the attitude of a person. Next, we go now to multiple factors that motivate man to commit crime. So, ano ba yung mga factors okay, na nakakapag-motivate sa tao para makakumit ng crime? So, first, we have the so-called biological or biological this approach is from the point of view of physiological organism biological biological explanation of criminality assumes that individuals vary in behavior because of their biolo biological structure differences okay for example of biological is inheritance heredity okay nakukuha mo sa parents mo Okay, so as I've said, heredity, Tuff cited in his book that heredity is one factor or cause of crime. Heredity is the transmission of physical and mental characteristics from parents to offspring. Baka pumalit tayo, inheritance and heredity is somewhat uh, the same. Okay, the existence of genetic factor in predisposing an individual to mental illness. Okay, biological factors view the belief that biological inheritance is based on the following assumption. So, as I've said kanina, okay, transmission. Okay, kapag once na, na ipanganak ka na, okay, natra-transmit na yung ibang, uh, uh, or may nakukuha kang genes ng nanay mo or tatay mo. Kaya, minsan sinasabi nila na, oh, kamukha mo yung nanay mo, or kamukha mo yung tatay mo. Nagmana ka kay mama mo, nagmana ka kay papa mo. Okay, ganun po ang heredity. Transmitting, transmission, physical and also mental. 
and also uh, is the criminal act itself is inherited under this view it is noted that there must be some direct connection between biological structure and the behavior uh, which is assumed to be inherited. A schizophrenic person possesses a tense and of, uh, oversensitive temperament, while a person suffering from uh, manic pace of the manic depressive psychosis is easily irritated and angry and becomes abusive whenever his desires are blocked. So, yan po yung tinatawag nating heredity. Yung mga nakukuha mo sa nanay or tatay mo na tratransmit nila sa'yo once na naipanganak ka na. Okay? Number two, endocrine gland or constitutional elements of the body with certain personality disorder. We have neurosis. Is any kind of the mental functional disorders characterized by anxiety, compulsion, phobia, depression, and disassociation, and many more. So, tinata uh, neurosis ang tawag doon kapag ka may anxiety, compulsion, phobia, depression, disassociation. Okay? Psychosis is a major, okay, major mental disorder in which the personality is very seriously disorganized. Okay? So, psychosis ang tawag doon kapag ka seriously disorganized. Agbagtit. Okay? May mali na sa iyo. May mali na sa pag-iisip mo. Hindi ka guide sa neurosis na meron ka lang anxiety, compulsion, phobia, depressed ka lang. Okay? So, neurosis lang. Pero kapag tinatawag na na psychosis, yan na yung sinasabi nilang baliw ka na. Okay? Baliw na yung tao na yan. Ganun po ang psychosis. Then, three, we have the so-called anatomical structure or yung tinatawag nating physical disease or disorder. This explanation or type of biological factor of criminality assumes that individuals vary in behavior because their biological structures differ. An early example is physiognomy or art of discovering character by observation and measurement of outward appearance, especially the face. Okay, physiognomy kasi ang tawag natin kapag ang uh, uh, mini-measure or ang pinag-aaralan is about our face. Physiognomy. Craniology naman kapag skull. Okay? Craniology by uh, Franz Joseph Spurzheim, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? So, uh, physical din, na, uh, nabibase din yan, yung heredity natin sa physical appearance natin as a person. Okay? Next, we have the so-called personality. This approach is very similar to the biological theory and cannot be sharply differentiated from it. Accordingly, feeble-mindedness cause crime for the reason, okay, feeble-minded individual is unable to appreciate, okay, Hin ang isang feeble-mindedness person kasi, okay, hindi niya na-appreciate, hindi siya nakakapag-appreciate, okay, or hindi niya alam yung consequence ng ginagawa niyang act, hindi niya alam na kapag ginawa niya to, ito yung uh, penalty na uh, pwedeng mangyari sa kanya. Okay? So, personality kasali din po yan. Sa mga multiple factors ng isang tao para makakumit ng crime. Siyempre, di ba? For example, if you are a uh, psy if you have a psychosis, okay, no, agbagtit ka, kung baliw ka, okay? Makakagawa ka talaga ng krimen. Okay? And in personality naman, yung personality mo, strong personality, okay? Minsan kasi, uh, because of your strong personality, okay? Uh, this will trigger you to commit crime. So, ganun po yun. Next, we have the so-called environmental or primary social groups. Okay? So, ito naman yung mga, sa environment naman natin, mga nakakasalamuhan natin. So, ang pinakauna, okay, is yung sa home, sa bahay. The home 
uh, has will been called the cradle of human personality. For in it, the child forms fundamental attitudes and habits that endure throughout his life. Siyempre, di ba? Sa, sa bahay natin or sa pamilya po natin, doon po nagsisimula ang lahat. Okay? Doon ka, net, doon ka nila tinuturuan ng tama. Okay? Ipinapakita nila sa'yo ang mali. Doon mo rin nakikita kung anong ginagawa ng nanay at tatay mo. Okay? Kung ang pag-aaway ba ng isang, uh, ng dalawang tao is tama or mali. So, doon pa lang sa bahay nyo, okay, may natututunan ka na. Kaya siya tinawag na cradle of human personality. Doon na po kayo nahuhubog. Doon pa lang sa bahay nyo or sa home ninyo nahuhubog na kayo as a person, as a human. Okay? Doon na din napupunta kung, or uh, doon, na din, doon na rin po kayo, Uh, na ipapakita o na ipapakita nyo na rin kung paano yung behavior ninyo yung attitude, attitude ninyo as a person, as a human okay, doon pa lang sa uh, sariling pamamahay natin okay, next, bad neighborhood syempre, eh, kung yung kapitbahay mo naman eh, ang ginagawa is uh, sila is drug pusher or drug user or hard killers di ba? So, uh, they are transmitting or nakukuha din natin. Okay? Broken home. Okay? Yes. Okay? Ang isang uh, pamilyang watak or yung broken home na tinatawag natin. Okay? Walang nanay, walang tatay. Okay? Incomplete. Okay? Minsan, dyan po nagsisimula yung uh, isang uh, bata. Okay? Siyempre, hindi, uh, wala siyang... Uh, makukuhanan ng uh, pagmamahal dahil nga uh, broken home nga siya. So, ang nakukuhanan lang niya is yung mga kaibigan niya and ipano naman yung mga kaibigan niya, ganito ang ginagawa. So, because of broken home, pwede rin po tayong or pwede siyang maging factor din. Okay? Maging factor na pwede kang maging uh, criminal. Next, school. The school is an strategic position to prevent crime and delinquency. This is the only institution uh, which is in a better position to mold a child to become a law-abiding and useful member of the society. But, okay, in school din kasi nangyayari din po yan yung tinatawag nating bullying. Diyan din po tayo nakakararas ng tinatawag nating bullying. Okay? Sa mga makakapanood nito, okay, uh, wag yung sabihin hindi kayo nabully. Okay? Even me, okay, Uh, I get bullied din naman. But not in the sense na yung pangbubuli is grabe. Okay? But many, many person, okay, is being bullied. Verbal, okay, or emotional, or spiritual. Meron din po. Marami po tayong nabubuli. Okay? At doon yan nangyayari sa school. But sabi nga nila, school is the institution which is a better position to mold a child. Yes. Okay, kasi diyan po uh, nila ipinapakita, diyan po nila iina, ini-inculcate sa atin na ito yung tama. Ito yung gagawin mo, okay, para hindi ka makagawa ng krimen. And also, uh, for you to become a law-abiding citizen in the future. Okay, so marami po tayong mapapag-aralan, okay, sa uh, paaralan or sa school. Because in a, in a school, they are molding us to become, uh, to become or became a uh, good person, okay, a law-abiding citizen. So, doon po. Next, we have religion, the police, the government, the prosecution, the court, and correctional institution. Okay, so yan naman, broader, uh, broader social process naman po yan. Kasali, kasali lang din dyan ang school. Okay? Sa environmental po yan. So, again, so, my slide is done. And thank you. Okay? So, uh, this end uh, our uh, discussion in Module 3.